We start tonight with a live look over the Mile High City. We're at 60 degrees here at 11 o'clock tonight. And it's looking like we might have some good news for those of you running the Colfax Marathon tomorrow. Hope you like it warm. There will be thousands of you running through the streets of Denver tomorrow. Our Chris Bianchi will be one of them. Um, it's going to be warm. At least it's not cold, rainy, that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah it's going to so. be. Exactly. It's, um, I mean, depends on how you view it. Running weather is extremely subjective. I tell you this as a big runner myself that uh, I love it when it's actually raining, uh, which is not the most popular of opinion, but um, it will not be the most PR of weather, what I mean by that, personal record kind of record, but it'll be pretty nice, I think, for the most part for tomorrow morning. So let's take a look at those weather headlines and isolated storms for tonight. It's drier for tomorrow and then more storms for your Monday, but still pretty active for us here on the Eastern Plains. Had some pretty strong storms out this way throughout the majority of the evening, but for us here in the metro area, maybe a spot shower for us as you head west of the Continental Divide, but I think we're basically done with any of those rain or storm chances for the night for us here in the metro area. Far Eastern Plains, that's where you have a strong storm. In fact, a severe thunderstorm warning for parts of Prowers County that goes until 11:15. So for the next 13 minutes or so, we're still looking at that severe thunderstorm warning out there for some gusty winds. Meantime, as we head over the next few hours, it'll be pretty calm as we head into your day tomorrow with storms across the northeastern corner of the state. Otherwise, I think we're going to be much drier tomorrow compared to today. Tonight, we drop back into low 50s for us and for tomorrow. We're going to be on the mild side for the Colfax Marathon and for the Nuggets game. All that activity, it's going to be fairly warm for us with highs in the low 80s for tomorrow and those high temperatures running about 10 degrees above average, but I'll get into a bit more detail about what you can expect for the marathon tomorrow and also a very, very active Monday and Tuesday. All that coming up in just a couple minutes. Chris, thank you. Here's your marathon countdown. Seven hours now from the start time of the full marathon. 26.2 miles kicks off at 6 a.m. tomorrow morning, runs through both Denver and Lakewood. It starts and ends at City Park, even takes runners through Empower Field. It's going to be a big day in Denver tomorrow. We've got all those folks running the Colfax, the full, the half, the 10 mile or the relays in the morning. And then tomorrow night, game seven, a must win for the Denver Nuggets. Nine News reporter Rhea Jaw shows us who else getting ready for tomorrow. Bright and early. We can't wait to see all these folks at the start line starting at 6 a.m. A bunch of streets, including Colfax Avenue between 6th and 26th Avenue will be closed for the big race. Denver Colfax Marathon truly has become a tradition in the city of Denver. So you've got 25,000 people participating in a sporting event in the weekend. So that by far is Denver's largest. 25,000 people running, bringing along thousands of their friends, family and supporters. You know, it's amazing how much of an impact it does have on the economy for Denver. We've got hundreds and hundreds of people um, coming in from out of town. So we have all 50 states, we have 11 countries, and I think this year we'll see about 2,000 people come from out of state. An influx Crazy Horse Kitchen and Bar is ready for. We're already kind of planned for a big brunch already, so we're already fully staffed and ready to go and take on all the people. But the day doesn't end with brunch. It's a big day in Denver. <laughs> we're hoping that everybody hits their goal and we're hoping the Nuggets hit their goal as well. Jay Lane is the manager of Crazy Horse Kitchen and another sports bar on Colfax. And it's game seven, round two, and so it's really like, every, it's just like all hands on deck. It's not our first rodeo, so we're just excited to have everybody come through. Whether it's the Nuggets or the Racers, everyone has someone to cheer for on Sunday. It's so much fun. Like Denver really comes together, which is super cool. Tomorrow the day begins here at the start line, so good luck to all the runners and good luck to all of you who are staying out all day and into the night. Hopefully the Nuggets game doesn't look like the Avs game last night. Reporting in Denver, Rhea Jaw, 9 News. A felony suspect wanted out of Teller County led police on a high speed chase early this morning, chasing him through multiple counties, Teller, Park and Summit County before it ended with a crash. Park County Sheriff says they first got word of an armed and dangerous man, a suspect wanted out of Teller County, and they got that word around 10 a.m. this morning. At 11, a deputy identified the suspect's car driving north on Highway 9 outside of Fair Play. When they tried to stop the car, police say the suspect refused, then took off, leading them on a chase through Alma and up Hoosier Pass. Deputies later called off the chase for safety reasons. Then Summit County deputies say they got a report of a car crashing later on near the town of Blue River. This happened a little before noon. No other cars were involved. A shelter in place was issued for the Blue River area. Highway 9 was shut down for much of the afternoon. That has now been lifted. The road is back to normal. The suspect is in custody. No word on his condition after the crash.
and nobody else got hurt. Tonight, crews on the Auraria campus are cleaning up the Tivoli Quad after the pro-Palestinian protesters who'd camped there for weeks have packed up and left. This is what it looked like when our crew stopped by early this morning. Campus officials are still limiting access to buildings right now. We're told the quad will be closed until they finish cleanup and that the items that they're cleaning up today were left behind by the protesters who didn't want to take them. One person is in the hospital tonight after falling 60 feet off a cliff. This happened at 830 this morning in the area of the 5400 block of Glade Road in Loveland. That's about 20 minutes south of Horsetooth Reservoir. Crews say it took about three hours to finish that rescue. No word on how the person's doing tonight. Tomorrow, presidential candidate Robert F. Kennedy Jr. will make a stop in Colorado. The campaign's planning a rally tomorrow at 3 p.m. in Aurora at the Stanley Marketplace. Kennedy's currently running as an independent, and he has chosen Nicole Shanahan, a California lawyer and former Democrat, as his pick for vice president. There's a critical path between Gunnison and Montrose. It's been closed for weeks now as CDOT crews work to repair a bridge over Blue Mesa Reservoir. The only detour can take hours. We talked to a man who says he has a solution to help people with a need to get to things like doctor's appointments. Nine News reporter Lauren Scafidi explains. We're heading to uh, La Junta, Colorado, pick up a group and take them to San Antonio, Texas. The driver of the bus gets to experience a lot behind the wheel. They're on vacation and I get paid to go on their vacation. <laughs> as beautiful as his trips are on the ground, it's a different perspective on trips a few thousand feet up. That is a picture of Telluride. For Steve Menzies. That's me. <laughs> the private pilot has been touring the country by air since the 1980s. Freedom. It, it's just, it's kind of a euphoria. It's free. But the trips he's hoping to offer his neighbors next will feel different. Payback time. We're going we're gonna to pay it forward and... Take care of them. Back in April, CDOT closed the bridge on U.S. Highway 50 over Blue Mesa Reservoir after finding cracks in the bridge, the quickest connection between Gunnison and Montrose. A new detour between the two cities can now take six or seven hours. Some of these people need to get to their doctor's appointments or uh, dialysis treatments or cancer treatments. Uh, veterans need to get to the VA hospital. Or a 45-minute flight. I came up with the idea. <laughs> I just reached out to all of them. And I said, hey, what do you guys think? Steve and his pilot buddies are here to help. We are your taxi in the air. Offering a ride to appointments while the bridge is closed yeah, and even after. Instead of just going up and, you know, drilling circles in the sky just to get some hours, now we have some purpose. The miles Steve puts in both up above and down below are fueled by something you can't buy in town between trips. That's in your blood. Passion. That's it. I get to meet all kinds of people and and see a lot of country. And we see a lot of country in the air, and it's kind of fun to see the country on the ground. Lawrence Cafiti, Nine News. We do have Steve's contact information in the online version of this story. You can find that at ninenews.com. The pilots are volunteering their time. They say they're offering to fly folks for free.